All right, today I want to talk about DOM token lists. Now, this is a special type of value that can be in certain attributes. The one that you're going to come across most often is the one having to do with CSS classes. So in my sample web page here, we've got a class attribute on our main element, and there's two strings inside of here with a space separating them. We can get the value of this by saying dot class list. So in our JavaScript, we can reference this, get the whole string, all the contents. Just like if we wanted this title, we can get that. So I've set up very basic JavaScript here. We've got five variables pointing to different elements on the page that I want to deal with. And I've got a listener here. And what this listener is going to do is as you edit these two input fields, it'll take the output and put it into the output field. Simple enough. All right. So inside of here, after all this setup, what I want to do is just, I will console.log out the main element. We can get its title and we can get class name. So those are the two property names. And there we go. So here's class name. Here's the title. It's just strings. That's all it is. However, if we change this and we say, I want console.classList, main.classList, what I'm getting now is a DOM token list. And this has an array of each one of the elements that are inside of there. So stuff and content. It took that big long string for class name and it cut it wherever there was a space and it turned it into a bunch of values. So it's monitoring this list for us. It has a length property. It's got a value property and the value property is going to be equal to class name. Now there are other elements that have DOM token lists. Examples being Up at the top here, we've got link tags um, with rel attributes, so the relationship. There's other elements like anchor tags that you can also add rel to, the relative, the purpose of the link. Um, here, again, I've put a bunch of text, and if I was to ask for the rel, this is my link. I'm pointing to other link, which is the ID that we have right here, so this element. If I were to console log that one, we can say link.rel, and it's going to give me the string. If I say console.log link.rel list, this is going to give me the DOM token list. So here's the string itself. This is the rel attribute, and then rel list, that specific property, gives me the DOM token list version of that value. Now, the title attribute that we had inside of our main element here, this one, this does not have a DOM token list version. It's just a string. That's all it is. Same way we can get class name and it's just a string or rel and it's just a string. DOM token list is this extra special property that gives us abilities to manipulate this list. So I can add and remove. I can turn things on or off so we can Say, I want to uh, main class list dot add, and I'm going to add one called Steve. That's going to add the class in there. If I come back into the page and I look at the elements and we open up main, there it is stuff, content, and Steve. So we have all three of those. Um, we can call toggle instead of add. And what that does is if it's not there, it adds it. So in the original HTML, it was not there. So it added it. If I call toggle twice, it adds and removes it. So you can have a function where you're toggling whether or not something is there or not. If we look at the reference inside of MDN, there are, we can see here, a whole bunch of possible methods. So add is what we used already. It adds it. Remove will remove it. We've got toggle that we just talked about. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. So toggle is the one that checks to see if it's there. And if it's not, it adds it. If it is, it removes it. We can replace. So if this class is there, I want to replace it with another one. So it searches through all of the items that are inside of there. Keys will get you all of the 
keys, which is basically just the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, however many items there are. Item, if you know the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you can put that in here to get the actual string value. For each, we'll loop through all the values inside of there. Entries gives you an array of objects where you've got the key and the value, so the key and the item, those two things. Contains, this is going to be a useful one. It allows you to check to see if a certain name is within that list. So if we wanted to come back here and we can check, you know, contains, and we'll console log the response from this. There we are. So true, because we added it. We called toggle. It added it onto it because the page when it initially loaded didn't have Steve. So now when I check to see if it does contain Steve, yes, it comes back as true. If I search for not Steve, that shouldn't be there. So we get the false. So add contains entries for each. Yeah, we covered all those. Supports. We didn't talk about supports. Um, supports checks to see whether something is a legal value. And by that, we're talking about things like this. Gibberish and nonsense. Those are not actual allowed values inside of the rel. For a link tag, the rel attribute, there's certain things like style sheet that is allowed. So we can come up here and check this. We'll say console.log link dot rel list, not the rel attribute, but rel list. Remember, we've got to get that DOM token list. That's the property that we're dealing with. And we want to use our supports method right here. This is what we're doing. And we can check a few things. So supports, does it allow for style sheet? Is that going to be an allowed property? How about gibberish? How about nonsense? How about shortcut icon? So we can check these four. And then when we run our code, there we go, true. Style sheet's allowed. But gibberish nonsense and shortcut icon, that wasn't allowed. But icon is. So there is a list of supported ones, and you can check to see whether the values that you've got inside of there, if you did a for each loop, you could loop through and test for each one of those values to see, is this something that's allowed to be there? All right, so that's class list, rel list. Those are two different DOM token lists. And the other one I was going to talk about very briefly here at the end, we've got our input and output elements. So as I type in either one of these fields, it's going to update the value inside of output. Now my output element, if we look in the HTML down here at the bottom, has a four. So just like labels do, but the difference between them is the four here has to have one ID. It's connected to one specific element. So EM is linked to EM, NM is linked to NM. The four inside of an output element were allowed to have a space separated list. And this is to indicate where the values are coming from. Yes, this is a calculated value, but where are we getting the raw data from? Now, the page is still gonna work if we don't have that there, but by putting it there, we can connect it to different parts of your interface and you can explain to search engines or other programs, where is this data coming from? And this for element is just a string, but there is a DOM token list equivalent. Here, let me just comment out a few of these just to reduce. There we go. And I'll just do it up here at the top so we can see what we're talking about. Output dot four, that is going to be the string value. So if I console.log that one, we're going to get the string value. However, console.log output.html4, capital F on the four, lowercase HTML. This is the string. This is the DOM token list. So if we look, there we go. 
So, uh, oh, undefined. Oh, yeah, four is a reserve where we shouldn't do that. We should say get attribute. This is the proper way to get the value out of there. Okay, so get attribute four. There we go. So there's the string, em and nm. Those are the two values that are inside there, but that is just one big long string. Or not long, but it's just one string. And then DOM token list. This is the one that you can edit. You can look at the individual values. You can loop through it. You can check if something is contained and so on. So this brings a lot of value to the output so we can figure out where things are coming from. All right. And that is DOM token lists. Uh, if you're looking for a copy of this code, there's a link to the code just down in the description. I'll also have a link to the MDN page for DOM token list down there. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.